on to the next session, which is on the Internet of Things. Now, as we all know, the Internet of Things has both the consumer side and the industrial Internet of Things. And when we speak about industrial Internet of Things, we also talk about 5G. We talk about smart cities. We talk about everything, uh, Internet of everything, basically. Our focus is going to be more on the enterprises uh, part of it, a little bit on the smart cities, a little bit on the confluence of all the technologies like AI, ML with uh, in, in the Internet of Things. And of course, how does 5G fit into this entire thing? What are the kind of problems that we faced? What are the kind of opportunities and what are the way forward? Uh, for that, I would now like to call on screen uh, Ritesh Aruda, the uh, Chief Digital Officer at Seattle Limited. Uh, Arvind uh, Tiwari, a technopreneur, uh, the chair IoT forum of the Indus Entrepreneurs. Suresh Kumar KK, who is the VP India Open Data Exchange and Data Spaces at the Indian Institute of Science. And Vri Srinivasa Rao, who is better known as VSR, the chairman and MD of BT and BT. I see that all of uh, them have managed to join out here. So uh, welcome, folks. Um, Let's uh, uh, get on with how to make uh, things uh, smarter. So, uh, friends, uh, as we see from uh, uh, the profiles of uh, all the speakers, uh, we will be talking uh, uh, both about the power of uh, IoT in enterprises and cities. And the rationale is very simple. Uh, there's endless amounts of data, as we have seen from the earlier panel also, but here in this particular case, available from sensors in real time today, whether from machines, uh, from objects, from customers or suppliers. Now, this has given the rise to new possibilities, not only in manufacturing, but also in logistics, developments and the services industry. Now, that said, IoT proje projects also need to prove uh, the ROI part of it, the return on investment. So in this context, we'll be uh, talking broadly about the opportunities, the challenges and the way forwards. Uh, so uh, let's start with you, Ritesh. Uh, 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 we have had this conversation uh, earlier too. Basically, let's talk uh, specifically about uh, SIAT as a company. You are the chief digital officer. IoT is just one of the technologies that you're using, of course, with a confluence of AI, AI and ML. It's not, we never strictly have a conversation just on IoT. So if, can you give our audience, uh, 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 you know, use a couple of minutes just to give us a perspective of what you're doing at SIAT with these uh, technologies? Yeah, so, you know, it's uh, uh, IoT, AI, you know, all these are uh, journeys. These are never ending journeys you keep building uh, on top of these. So so in that sense, uh, we are also on that journey, like many other enterprises, we are also uh, uh, trying to leverage these technologies. So, you know, we, we all have been hearing 50 billion devices, uh, connected devices and all. So essentially from a manufacturing perspective, and since you said that you could get some, uh, uh, you know, background on what's happening on Seat, from that perspective, things for us are tires, and the machines that manufacture the tires. And we are working on uh, connecting both of these. And uh, it's very interesting the, the kind of use cases or the kind of business objectives uh, these lend to. For example, if I talk about smart products, right? Uh, uh, so we are uh, putting sensor inside the tire, uh, right? And, and traditionally, you know, and, and in many of your cars, you would have seen uh, temperature and pressure readings. So now we are going few steps ahead and we are saying that we should be able to predict failures, we should be able to say when the wheel alignment is due, uh, all these alerts will be delivered on mobile uh, to the customer. And another interesting thing, uh, use case is that uh, if you think of fleets, the commercial fleets, you can change the entire business model. You can make it, uh, you know, per kilometer basis, cost per kilometer model. Uh, so there are a lot of interesting possibilities in disrupting the industry. And another interesting thing about this is that uh, uh, smart product, unlike, and I'll come to the plants, uh, smart product, you can still innovate in isolation without disrupting your existing business. Still you are innovating. Once, of course, you launch, then, uh, you know, you have to maintain that balance. There are conflicts which need to be managed. Uh, uh, and whereas, uh, you know, the plant is concerned, uh, the challenge, the, the, the objectives are very different. Here, you are trying to get more customers, 
change the revenue model, make more revenue. Whereas in plant, it's about cutting costs drastically, be it through scrap production or through energy, power, uh, etc. Cost of poor quality and making uh, better quality products with a much higher productivity. So you are making better quality products at a lower cost. So the cost is uh, uh, a big objective here. And uh, it is very different from smart product in that sense because, uh, you know, the uh, implementation that you are going to do, you know, you are going to do in a running plant and, and that too in a process manufacturing plant like ours uh, mm -hmm. or any process manufacturing plant, it's, it's uh, you know, quite disruptive when you, uh, you have to do it very, very carefully so that you don't uh, interrupt the production that is going on. So, yeah, so that was my two minutes on uh, what we are doing, why we are doing, and what are the challenges in brief. You know, you said a lot in those, you said a lot in those two minutes, and uh, it, it was amazing what you do. And I know that uh, you, it, many of them were understatement because I know the kind of work that you're doing with the smart tires. And uh, of course, the question is what happens if these are smart tires? What happens uh, to the other products? Do we call them not so smart products? So, <laughs> of course, <laughs> so it's always that kind of balance that one has to strike. Uh, 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 Suresh, in, in your case, you have been on both sides of the fence. You have dealt with uh, companies, you were at Bosch Engineering, you were with Intel Lab, you were with Saskin Communications. Now you're with the IUDX, the open source cloud platform-based platform of uh, IISC, and this is the India government smart city uh, mission. Uh, so you have seen the smart products space, and now you're making cities smarter. How where do you see this whole, uh, we want to understand the IoT connection out here. And as you, uh, when we were having this discussion earlier, uh, I think you, even the Ritesh and all the other speakers also clearly say that, you know, today when we cannot talk about IoT in just an isolation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Leslie. Um, uh, uh, thanks for uh, having me here. So um, um, if you look at... Um, uh, Ritesh actually touched up on a very pertinent point, and you were asking actually, you know, uh, what is the IoT connection in industry? So it's actually had gone up to the vehicle tire, okay? So I think it cannot go beyond that. So from a city point of view, um, if you look at 2015, uh, India started 100 smart city program. And uh, at that time, if you look at the situation in this country, uh, we had only... Um, few video cameras connected in cities which is basically doing surveillance or whatever available fiber and uh, then you know the smart city program was looking at uh, traffic management transport uh, when is my bus coming uh, air quality monitoring solid waste management which we were um, water management this kind of things and uh, the only way was basically to do it with iot if iot was not there I would say it would have not been possible. I think we have discussed this before also in some of our other summits, where um, um, the we call it actually we can call it a smart city 1.0 or smart city phase one, where this is predominantly digitization of manual operations. For example, we are um, um, cutting a traffic challenge for a traffic violation means, you know, somebody need, somebody need to catch him, stop the vehicle and pull out the key and then issue a ticket. Um, and other than that, you put a camera and do a, a character recognition, we pick up the number plate and then see in what seconds, how many seconds you have violated and then give a ticket according to that. So this is basically converting manual to digital. And that phase was really hard it means predominantly it is capital intensive deployment of sensors and you know at that time we connected we were actually when we started most of the devices were actually gprs and 4g was just evolving so now 4g has come and then we are actually moving towards 5g so with uh, cellular connectivity take the data to the nearest point nearest fiber point and from there basically you can get onto the data center on the internet so the sensors convert the physical reality of a number plate or a solid waste waiting or a where is my truck or where is my bus into a digital uh, scenario. And then now we have good amount of huge amount of data. And that is the phase one. And, you know, we 
keep many times you know, we keep complaining saying that oh, 2015 it took four years five years cities are still uh, coping up with it yes it takes tremendous amount of effort to deploy it. and i would say that we were actually not sure how we are going to do that but i would say that with all against all the odds most of the cities have done extremely well and thanks to all the companies for siemens hitachi hp you name it everybody everybody was lnt tata projects everybody was there in the in the game and now the good thing is many cities around 20 to 30 cities actually generating good amount of data and that is the time actually we were looking at now the data is available and we keep hearing no data is the new oil and and data is gold <laughs> so what is our behavior if something is so precious do not share it to anybody hold on to our chest right so uh, this was one of the problem and good that you know ministry of housing and urban affairs which is a smart city ministry recognized it and we started it as actually a project of creating a data exchange it means you can bring the all the data sets not only smart city data healthcare data everything into the platform and now you can share it out from there and means the 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 power of the solution the phase 2 which is actually ai ml driven phase 2 we don't need new sensors we don't need new cameras the available data itself is so powerful you combine it for example you take the solid waste data combine with the traffic data combine with the transport data and then optimize the whole solid waste management so this is predominantly ai ml driven and this is what we call it as phase 2 and once we have the data exchange and we are ready to share the data to the data consumers again back to the same lnt data projects hitachi so they can combine them and create killer application for example yeah. if you do an optimization of solid waste management means when the truck should go how many he should pick up even though 100 is allocated to you you pick up only 30 because you are already full now that itself will get you around 20 to 30% efficiency So from a solid waste management budget of around um, 100 crore for a city you know 30 crore is a huge and we are not talking about new sensors we are talking about data analytics based solution which may couple of crores may be needed for that and rest is all money generated out of it that so this is how phase 1 has done the base work of digitization and phase 2 is really going to explode with the killer applications great thanks suresh i think uh, uh, what is important that uh, we are already bringing out the clear relationship between iot data ai ml and then you know 5g the, which is why i'm going to keep arvind for the last because he has promised to speak on the connection between 5g so let's move to v- uh, vsr uh, vsr this is shorter so i uh, yeah. hope you don't yeah so yes, now you have been speaking to a lot of plans you have been speaking to a lot of people um in this particular context of iot what are companies asking you what are the kind of uh, opportunities opportunities that you see there yeah well, thanks uh, actually if you look at in the past uh, most of the times we were asked to automate the processes to reduce the human interventions and all but today uh, it is very very complex and the whole anatomy of the business is getting impacted i think you rightly said the confluence or fusion of technologies it's not just 3 4 i put it on one slide is the 20 technologies or more have been impacting and uh, the board of directors the cxo ceos are worried now because it's not just only uh, impacting the process automations like uh, if you know the car has almost uh, a million lines of code a pacemaker has 80000 lines of code so you can give now the life to any non living thing or a thing okay that means what your products are getting digitalized they are asking what sort of new features needs to be added in my product i think one of our colleagues said the seat they are adding sensors to uh, the uh, tire right like that uh, giving like that means they are able to sense they are able to think they are able to communicate it is a car or a machine or equipment or asset whatever it is that's what the second important thing is uh, they are talking about how do you really bring digital innovations in our services that means the omnipresent anywhere anytime using any device can i offer my healthcare services can i offer for my banking services it could be a wearable device then i can get my accounting information it could be a tele health so that in a remote area i could get a better healthcare at all so the services configuration is getting changed 
and most importantly the business models are changing because of this technology fusion unfortunately we are not really able to focus most of the customers in india so you look at in australia one of the very good examples i will tell you a bank is doing a non banking activity what does it mean they ha- they have a loan platform which is a software platform they enrolled the real estate providers into that platform car dealers into that platform that's called i think the providers right the other side any of you have millions of consumers already your account holders or your deposit holders and all what they did very simply the real estate providers uploaded all their venture details the car dealers uh, uploaded all their cars and whatever the different models are there there is a match making now i want to purchase a house i have now 100 real estate providers at one place that is a banking system where i can basically search for my preferences i get a great house i i select it then what is the advantage to the bank here give the loan after all to give the loan now they are want to do a match making it is like a uber type of a platform they built it right so now we have to look at um, the customers are looking for how you please change my business models what new channels i can open to reach my customers what new pricing models i have to have and all right so i think uh, the whole anatomy of the business is changing that's where the customers are worried that hey my god i mean if you don't change one one classic example i'll tell probably uh, then we can move to the next part you know it's baby diapers right the baby diapers are injected with software they have uh, embedded uh, chip and software and then there is something like 5g connected to the mobile phone you can read now the glucose level or a blood pressure or temperature mom can be sitting at the office and she can see what is the health of my baby this is the classic example of a baby diaper but can you imagine so i am the ceo of a company who have been there in the industry for last 40 years i have been producing a baby diaper rashless smooth and all i don't survive if i don't embrace this new technologies and add the chip and software into my uh, baby diaper and all i think these are all the changes are happening because of the uh, technological confluence or fusion Yeah, I think this is exactly what we have been speaking out throughout the day and all the conversations, smart versus the no, not so smart uh, kind of products and uh, disruption basically. And uh, Advind is like itching now to get in the 5G angle out to it. We have touched upon it a bit, but uh, I can see Advind smiling very broadly. So Advind. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. And thanks a lot. Just before we started, we had uh, Uma Ganswani talk about Moonshot and I will relate to that. one of the problems in india which is not realized when we copy a lot of ideas is that we have a very frugal economy we don't have the money and one of the things in iot is the lack of capacity when you need data for ai you need lots of measurements a chocolate factory or a biscuit factory or a smart city typical smart city when you have all those seven or eight large applications running you need around 60000 devices a square kilometer none of the current technologies in india can support that device density 3g will collapse much before that we don't have the spectrum of the device wifi will also collapse and we need a lot of power for these devices power has also collapsed so you need a very different way of architecture spectral efficiency and ways to do and 5g has i mean lots of people will talk about bandwidth that is one part of 5g the other part of 5g which is more relevant from an iot is massive device density 5g is specifications run for 100000 devices per square kilometer or a base station 30 40000 are in practice so that's a big issue plus the power required for devices low and you can offload you don't need a central base station from a service station you can have femto stations small routers in your factory in your apartment and you can offload a lot of thing from the central stations which is what is happening in, in industrial iot a lot of factories a lot of townships are going for what is called a private lte network you bypass the cellular reliance or airtel etc you do an in house thing it's fairly easy to do the open ran specifications that 5g offers allows that and satellites also come to the picture you may be uh, surprised at how affordable and available lora and other satellite based uh, communication is available in remote areas so the connectivity equation spectral efficiency is changing which means that you need imagination typically in enterprise too much is driven by cost reduction 
and if i may say the bean counters who have very little imagination how to use technology to take moon shots and disrupt all these things are very disruptive if you collect a lot of data you can optimize i mean tiktok tells you within 2 minutes what movies you will like it doesn't need to do much it measures everything so the experimental mode the need to experiment a lot and embrace a lot of the moonshot ideas of data driven ai using much efficient low cost devices to be the key and smart cities unfortunately unfortunately is a lot about physical infrastructure they are building fiber they are building bridges they are building parks they are not using ai and algorithm for much of smartness apart from car parking where something has happened and suresh can correct me there is not much of data transformation that's happening in india i think the other panelists the earlier panelists wouldn't have liked you on your panel <laughs> because <laughs> i mean <laughs> especially the telcos when you're saying just bypassing the uh, major telcos and moving on to other technologies but that said of course the point is also we have to see 5g in the country in the first place the spectrums uh, auctions are yet to take place but uh, having said that i mean there are other challenges when implementing iot one is of course like integrating the apis with legacy machines lack of good data lack of good talent too many departments to liaise with lack of standards hence interoperability so would anybody of you uh, like to comment on these challenges ritesh perhaps because uh, we can start with ritesh yes yeah, sure uh... so early in the day when we embarked on digital journey not specific to iot uh, you know one of the first learning was that uh, as long as the data entire companies traditionally have been b2b and it's uh, just five years back that we uh, started talking to the consumers and collecting consumer data so as long as the dirty data is within the four walls of the enterprise people know their way around bad data but the moment you expose this data to the outside world hell breaks loose that's when you really know the quality of your data so so i think and that's a tough one to crack because it's uh, not just uh, a function of uh, you know putting together a technology solution but culture and uh, very very strong governance around it uh and specific to iot i mean i i can talk about uh, some of the challenges that we have seen and uh, you know tire is a very unique product in that sense i'm sure that uh, all product companies all products have their own idiosyncrasies uh, but tire i think it would be up there when it comes to being uh, uh, you know very difficult for sensitization because tire is rubber as the temperature increases uh, the physical properties that dimensions of the product change right and many of the algorithms that we have you know the diameter of the tire so you have to have the dynamic diameter health as well and then you have so many radial forces now now the sensor inside the tire it's an extremely hostile environment uh, you know the temperature is going up to 80 90 degrees uh, you have uh, very high g forces and you have battery also inside and then uh because we have radial tires so the seal uh, cage it's like a faraday's cage and it tries to prevent the signal from escaping so so before you talk about iot analytics or anything in uh, in our industry first you need to understand physics so first we cracked physics equation before we started getting into algorithms and models and all of that so so that is a big challenge that uh, you know so many prototypes were made so many so much of testing was done to ensure that uh, the integrity of the sensors the battery doesn't burst because it's also a you know a safety hazard if the battery catches fire and all so so the lot of rigorous testing happened even before we could get into the stage and then like i said because uh, it's an enclosed body getting the signal out was very difficult um back in the day the you know bluetooth used to suck battery very fast but now uh, that has improved so uh, you know so we had radio frequency based transmission then we realized that the truck length is very long so the signal doesn't reach the gateway so we put some adapters in so i mean and and then uh, trucks go into remote areas also on highways whereas there is no signal so i would say the challenge is i mean if all, even before we hit the market and you know a lot of times we say that pushing the business model 
new business model in the market the pricing those other challenges but for me so far these have been uh, you know the really really uh, big challenges so no fair yeah. enough <clears throat> no i mean if if i probably start asking all the panelists each of the challenges i think i'll be spending another uh, you know two hours just on the litany of the challenges so i will not get there uh, i will quickly in the interest of time because we just have about two a couple of minutes left each one of you uh, just a uh, uh, quick minute let's let's start with uh, suresh suresh how how do you address these challenges uh, two points basically yeah uh, yeah, yeah uh, sure uh, uh, leslie Uh, so one is uh, basically from a uh, um, IoT is uh, the sensor devices previously had to be very accurate. I would say 2016 kind of a time frame. But now data analytics and ML ML has come. So we can actually predict a lot of data, extrapolate a lot, lot of data. Hence, you know the cost and the complexity and the connectivity requirement of IoT devices are actually becoming less. I think that's a great plus. and second thing is as i mentioned the ai ml you know with that you can predict the data you can uh, create any kind of inferences put automation so that is the second plus and third one is we are getting into a mode i would say this is this is a not a major challenge technically we we can i would say there is technology wise there is not a challenge we are getting into a mode of you give me the good amount of data i will create a killer application for you and i will also give you some money back so then we need to be we are talking about a new business revenue models government's purchasing mechanism has to move from quality come cost basis to l12 uh, you know how how much money i am going to save and then uh, how much you are going to give me for data monetization how much you are going to give me as a saving so that is going to be i would say little bit of a challenge but yeah i, mean, I think I some part of it is practical some part of it is pretty wish fulfillment so let i think we will we will we'll rest in there uh uh uh, sir, uh a quick thoughts please yes sir it's on mute you need to unmute it yeah sorry so most of the things i think we spoke but most important thing in my view is the cyber security today you got connected uh, Uh, to the whole internet and anybody we have, 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 yeah. we have a whole panel dedicated to that now right so one important thing is cyber security and second i feel uh, there is a paradigm shift required from the academic institutions and also the uh, organizations the convergence of engineering especially when you talk about iot uh, you need uh, mechanical you need electronics communication computer science it instrumentation i think the convergence of i think all these engineering disciplines plays a very vital role to make a product successful and also to address uh, some of the challenges mentioned by our panel last one as i come from services industry a lot of changes are happening while you deliver the software applications in this space there are new methods and philosophies are coming in the software engineering like uh, uh, ml ops like uh, ai ops and uh, model ops data ops is another important thing i think data is really becoming a very very critical thing so i think all this new software engineering practices needs to be embraced by the ca organizations or they have to get it from the partners and all to deliver faster and better or high quality iot solutions okay thank you very much and then maybe the last one has been there yeah so i just wanted to buttress two things suresh mentioned about the fact that with lot of data both in time and space and analytics ai ml the need for very high quality sensors or the need for understanding the physics of the phenomena is far less important and i would mention it i have seen continental and other tire companies do with a lot less physics because there are other ways of solving the problem and it's a question of experimentation and you can see it with the way swarms and drones are changing military warfare i mean uh, in the european uh, war i mean you had you had uh, in the eastern europe country wars drones completely obliterated territorial army swarms go in and go out and these are controlled in a very de- devious ways they do not have very high precision very accurate cameras etc it's just a lot of data and analytics i think we are in a very different era where a lot of low quality sensors lot of low quality machines cheap machines but operating like a swarm of flies with ai ml can completely outgun the elephants 
and with that i would like to end it <laughs> i know ritesh may want to counter that for sure because ritesh is actually the man or uh, on the uh, factory floor who has to uh, tackle uh, the stuff because you have given a 360 degree view but i'm sure people like ritesh are looking at all these uh, newer technologies so friends uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, hopefully we'll have some physical events also where i can have some more interaction in uh, so thank you very much once again thank you so much thank you yeah.